Welcome to RN Health Tips with Teresa Crowley, a place for inspiration, information, and support. Teresa has been an RN for 25 years and is sharing her experiences and techniques for building a healthy life. Now, here's Teresa. Hello, and thanks again for joining me. I'm Teresa Crowley. I would like to present a little bit today on anxiety. Now, we've talked about it before, but anxiety can present itself in a lot of different ways. And a lot of people, they say, oh, I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm not anxious. That's not me. Well, maybe it's presenting to you in a different way that person isn't really recognizing. The first way is maybe a desire to control everything from coming and going. Where are the keys? They have to be right here. You know what I mean. When someone wants to be in 200% control, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit about that, but you know when people want to be in control of everything, that could be the sign that they're having anxiety that they're not controlling anything at all. So look at that as a sign and maybe try and make them verbalize. The next way is maybe not getting much sleep. I know that some things affect and there are some metabolic things that, you know, affect sleep and at different ages, different ways to affect sleep. But if someone you know is not getting good sleep, is not getting rest, um, it could be a sign that, you know, they're very anxious about something. I think in these days where we have a quarantine, the pandemic, we have things on television that, you know, we should limit our watching, but sometimes it just gears us up to the spot where we get anxious, making a point of not watching anything but fun, happy movies, maybe some music videos so that I can chill out before I want to go to sleep. I can't watch some of the news programs within an hour of when I want to go to bed because there's just something in the back of my mind that's just running and I feel that it is anxiety that's going on. So that could be another way that it will present itself and I really have recognized that. If you are a little defiant or you have challenging behaviors, now this can be co-workers, this can be people around you, this can be children, um, your spouse, if they're a little defiant and they have other challenging behaviors, if you say the sky is blue and they go, well, not really, you know, that might be a sign of it. Or if um, you just present your opinion on something and they disagree, they defy you, they are challenging you about something That could be a sign, too, that they have more going on and that they are anxious. And I think that is really a telltale sign that maybe they need to talk or maybe they need some stress relieving activity, some fun to, you know, take that anxiety down a peg or two. And the really, really important one for me when I'm thinking about how anxiety is going to present itself is you get pains, you get sore, you get have a headache, your neck hurts, your stomach hurts, or maybe you're not eating at all. Telltale signs that there are things that are wrong. There are things that are not okay. And again, I know verbalization and talk to them. I use that a lot, but I really do think it helps. Now, I have a friend who lives in Texas, and she has a daughter that lives in another state. Her and her husband, every other day, call and talk with her because they know how tough this situation can be. They also glean a lot of information from her when they call, and they know it's stressful being there alone. She making it on her own. It's kind of like a Mary Tyler Moore girl. She's doing great, but guess what? During these times, mom and dad are there and they're calling and they're talking to her because they really do feel that she needs some human touch. She needs some human uh, attitudes and a different attitude. And so that's another way to tell if they're anxious, you can talk it out. You can visit with them on the phone, let them know that they're loved. 
let them know that these are not typical times and that you understand that it's not a typical time in anyone's life. You may not understand what they're going through, but you're there. Be there. I think the television show Lassie, for people who are older, was so popular because that dog was there. That dog so-called understood that your feelings. And I think we need, if we don't have a pet, maybe a person, a telephone call, to let our feelings out, to let them know just how you're feeling. I have had better conversations with my dog than I think anyone. And I think that's because they have that sixth sense too. They want to take care of you. Okay, that's it. We will talk to you again. Thank you so much for joining me today.